I'm going to go over uh, Euler Angles X. Um, in paint here I have Euler's Angles X. Uh, this shows from 0 to 90, 90 to 0, 360 to 270, 270 to 360. I also have on the other side here Euler Angles Y and Z. This goes from 0 to 360. Now these angles, um, you can get them local, you can get them uh, world. Just being Euler angles like this means world. X will always be something like this, and Y and Z will be like this. Now, depending on uh, the rotation of your object, you will need whichever axis. So a good trick here, if you need to deal with something that has an Euler's angle X and you don't want to deal with this, you can just rotate and you'll be in this axis, Y or Z. Um, this kind of looks like a Gimlock problem, but um, really it's not an imaginary axis issue. It's more of a, this is what calculations will come up from Unity. And you can, you can ask what the Euler angles is and write code to kind of figure this out really what it is, what the Euler angle X is. Um, you could even make a private variable and you could hold your Euler X as you rotate so you know actually where X really is for you. Uh, you could calculate what the X is with some math, but the thing is is that it's not as accurate between the two. For some reason, this and the calculation will not be identical, so I don't really recommend that. Um, there are other ways to deal with this. So I'm going to show you the way I deal with this sometimes. Uh, so if I need this right here, this kind of angle, what I do is I rotate the object. So I'm going to go into play mode. This is a, a different game, different project. And you'll see that uh, for this character here, I want to limit the up and down movement. But I also want to rotate all the way around. Now, rotating all the way around is usually a Y. And up and down is usually X, um, but in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up and down Z. So what I do is I go to my game object, the parent, and I rotate it on the Y, negative 90. So now, you'll be able to see right here, when I uh, rotate this up and down axis is now a Z axis. So you can see here it is being altered by a z-axis. And that allows me to then use the same code that I've written for x that doesn't work, work for y and z. And I don't change anything other than the axis. So I go into the code and we'll see that all I did change was the axis. So we come down here and the axis has changed. Uh, I think it's in the transform one, yes, this one right here, clamping the Z, so here's the clamp. Now, if I go look at the object here, I'm going to explain that when you make like your, your player um, movement, your player character movement scripts and whatnot, normally you want to have the axes the Y, the X, and the Z, if you're going to manipulate those separate. Um, so like a camera movement, player movement, uh, if you want to look up and down, you would have that axis separate with a child. So you have the parent maybe being the X, the child maybe being the Y. Kind of going like that. Uh, this is kind of the similar concept so that you don't have to worry about uh, quaternions well, excuse me, you will have to use quaternions, but what I'm saying is you don't have to worry about gimbal lock is what I'm, I'm trying to explain. So in the script here, it may look a little funky that I have two transforms to some people. It may look funky, but that's actually so that I can just code one. And because it's parented, uh, this Y is parented to the X here, as I move up and down, I keep that relationship that I need so that I can get the rotation that I need. You can see here, this is not buggy whatsoever. This is this is what I want perfect right here. And again, this is basically uh, changing from X to Z to make this work. And here's the, the picture to understand this. 
if you really have to know what the X is, again, I would suggest saving a private variable and as you rotate the X, writing down what that is.